I take a lot of pride in my work, so if something is usable, which a lot of the research workers will accept, if it doesn't look good, it doesn't leave my workshop. So I'm Terry Adams and I am the Glass Design and Fabrication Facility Manager, also the only scientific glass blower for the University of Oxford. The main aspects of my job are design, fabrication and repair of scientific research glassware. So a typical job would be a research worker would come to me to discuss either a conception for a piece of glassware that they have, an example of a piece of glassware that's been used for similar research elsewhere that they would like me to produce, or a complete concept based around a theory or a line of research that they have where they know what they would like the apparatus to do but have absolutely no idea of how to go about designing it in glass. It was quite funny actually training as a scientific glass blower because when people ask what you did and you, you told them the first thing they said oh so you make test tubes so uh, but but no it's so much more than test tubes as a glass blowing workshop it's not just glass blowing that we do so many different types of uh, forms of glass manipulation also do glass to metal so I can seal different metals into the glass to make electrodes and things like that Working with glass, obviously you're using a lot of heat, so when things get hot they expand. When they cool down they contract. Well that's the same for the air inside of the vessels that you're working with. So you could spend hours putting a piece of nicely coiled glass inside something else and that all goes in a jacket. And if you haven't figured out the correct way of making it, you'll find that you may end up with a sealed system whereby the whole thing just sucks in and you lose it or the whole thing blows out. So you, you ha actually have to not only design it, but then work out the principles that you need to go through in the order that you need to make it, to be able to make it successfully. And, and that's what I enjoy, is, is the challenge of making something in glass and then looking back at it and seeing if you can see the joins. People always say, you make it look easy. Well, I should hope so, I've been doing it a long time. So there are no longer any schools or colleges that teach scientific glass blowing in the UK at the moment. So all training is undertaken in-house. And it takes a certain type of person to be able to do the job. University-wide now, there are very few universities that actually have in-house scientific glass blowers now. There are a few companies that are expanding the sort of specials area, but no, it's, it's definitely a, a dying trade. I think there will always be the demand for the specialist glass blower, but glass as it used to be used in research and chemistry in particular um, has changed a lot the demand because there are a lot of alternative materials available now which they can use, but there are some things that you have to use glass. I think for me the most satisfying thing is being able to produce something with my hands something as well which you know you know it's going to be used for research for good it, and it's going to help not only the person you're making it for but hopefully beyond that uh, at some point the wider world is my little bit of influence on history <laughs> <laughs>